how do you how is it so easy for you guys just to have a camera running a lot and to say hey here's what we're doing today welcome to my life like how do you do that it's very it's hard for me and i want a podcast company come on now <laughs> it, it was not easy for me at first and i'm a super outgoing i'll talk to a wall if i have to kind of person yeah but the, the, to hold that camera in front of my face and talk i like almost froze up a little bit or just didn't know what to say. You just didn't have the same energy yeah. as you had in real life on camera. Yeah. So I think that for me came over time and even still today, sometimes, you know, you, you're just not up for filming, but you kind of got to do it or yeah. what, what, whatever the case may be. It's something that you definitely have to work into. Some people like Alex, I think just like kind of had it. Like she, she's great on camera. She's able to be herself. She's funny. Um, I, I think that she hits all, checks all the boxes when it comes to being on camera. Well, thank you very much. But I also used to compete as a public speaker. So I was in an oh, organization go. called Toastmasters. No and I did that. way. My cousin, yeah. my cousin's a Toastmaster uh, in Massachusetts. And she does a podcast on our network called Talking Toastmasters, where she talks to a bunch of Toastmasters. So cool. I'm very familiar with Toastmasters. Yeah, it's a really cool organization. That's, I didn't know it was international. Yeah, so I joined it in Canada originally, and then when I came to New York, I liked it so much, and I found a club in New York, um, and actually one of the businesses that I worked at, they had a in-house Toastmasters club where they would actually give you a $1,000 bonus if you completed your first 10 speeches within a year. Mm -hmm. So you're like, I'm like, yeah, that's easy. I'll do 10 speeches and make $1,000. Like, who would say no to that? But apparently a lot of people would say no to that because a lot of people don't like public speaking. Yeah. But in any case, so I had a little bit of a background in that, you know, just articulating myself in front of people. So, and also before Frankie and I met, we both had our own YouTube channels. So I was the hungry health coach and I was, you know, doing cooking videos and healthy mm. lifestyle stuff. And Frank was F-bomb vlogs, doing snowboarding videos. So we had a little bit of experience on our own before we joined forces as f and Van Life. Um... But I think the hardest thing about putting your life out there like that nowadays, the comments, the comments. Yeah. 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 So we get so much overwhelmingly positive comments and the majority of people who watch our stuff are lovely, but then you get the couple of haters or the, you know, the rude people that come in and just like kind of try to funk up your whole day, you know, yeah. they definitely make you feel some type of way. And it's kind of funny. You have to, really have to be able to balance out the fact that a lot of those people, when they say these things, it's very much a reflection of themselves and it's very much mm -hmm. um, what they're going through, mm -hmm. like their, their own thought process. So to, to remember to not be offended by it and to understand that it's just coming from their perspective of what they've been through and then trying to correlate it to what they've just seen, um, you know, you, you have to just be like, okay, it's fine. And then you have to come at the comment with a, you know, a good twist on it or a positive way or say, you know, you're entitled to that opinion. You know, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And, but this is realistically how it goes when you live on the road because we're doing it. It's just hard because I feel like the bad comments stand out in your mind. What you can read a hundred good yeah, comments one and that comments, one bad yeah. comment. But the nice thing about podcasting is you don't really get that many bad comments. Yeah. Like I feel like, um, you know, obviously we want people to leave reviews and we want people to like do five stars and blah, 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 but you get way less, um, interaction with people on the podcast because there's not like a real comment section as such for like each episode. So, you know, you'll get the stars and whatever. And like, I don't, I don't think anybody's ever given us like a one star review on our podcast. Cause you know, maybe we're just not that big yet, but you know, you don't have that same keyboard warrior world in the world of podcasting as you do in the world of video. I also think a big difference is when you're listening to a podcast a lot of the time, or at least in our, you know, in our life, we listen to it while we're traveling a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So you, you drive in, there isn't, you have the inability to comment if there is their opportunity. Um, and instead you're clicking to the next podcast to listen to instead of making that comment. Yeah, there's a lot of people yelling at their radios, which is exactly where they should be yelling, all right? Yeah. <laughs> That's my true opinion. Um, so what has been the most successful part of your podcast? Where did you find the most success? 
I think just in hearing from people who listen to the podcast, like we get emails from people all the time thanking us for putting this information out, thanking us for being so open about all the topics that we're talking about and really just kind of like, you know, reaffirming that, you know, we are reaching the right people and the people who need to hear this information are getting it. And it's just really satisfying to know that we're helping people on their van life journey. Yeah. Yeah, and it would be wonderful to, to have tremendous growth and be a huge podcast. But at the same time, as long as there's people out there that are, are getting value from it, that's all that matters to us. Even if it's one person, that's okay. We, we want to try to give as much value as we can. And if we help somebody, we've done our job. 